to lift your hands and tell you to Lord, you're holy. Lord, you're holy.
Yeah. Woo! Oh, so sorry, so sorry, so sorry. Hallelujah, yeah. To God be the glory. I tell you what, guys, if that song don't get you fired up for the Lord, I don't know what's wrong. Because I'm going to tell you, am I in the wrong spot? Am I okay? Okay. Uh, we serve a holy God and a righteous God. And I want to tell you something, guys. Whenever we did that, whenever 2020 did that on the mission trip, oh my goodness. I mean the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit fell every time they did that. And I'm telling you, people would get up. They would get up out of their seats. They were shouting. They were praising. Even people got saved, even, even in the midst of all that was going on. And, and it was because of why. Why are we here? To worship God. That's right. And, and, and that's what we're here again to talk about. And we're going we're gonna to recap about what we talked about last week about, are these chairs different? They're not like all twisted around. We're going to have to get you all twisted around next time. Uh, anyway... We're going to talk about how awesome our God, remember we talked about him last night and how he's worthy, worthy to be praised and he's the holy God and he's righteous. So I don't want you all to ever forget about Jehovah God and, and, and don't ever just become satisfied with who he is and be bored with sitting in that chair, okay? Don't, don't, don't be bored with being here. You, you just worship him and become overwhelmed with who he is. Let's pray. Father God, I just want to thank you, Lord, for this day. And, and God, I know, that, I know that Scott and I have been up since 2.30 this morning. And, and Lord, I know a lot of people had storms and different things that happened last night. But Father God, I want to praise you, God, for who you are because you protected so many people and protected us from the storms. And Lord, even the ones that had injuries, they were very small. And God, we just want to praise you for that. We praise you for your protection. And Father God, tonight, as we talk about how we worship, that, Lord God, you would just be, to speak to us, God. Open our ears and allow us to hear your word and allow us to hear your Holy Spirit speaking to us, God. And, and, Lord, again, I pray that if somebody's here that doesn't know you as their Savior and they don't even believe that you're real, I pray that tonight, Jesus, that they would come to you at the, any time during, during this service, but especially at the invitation, Lord, that they would come to you just begging you for mercy and, Lord, that they would ask you into their heart. So, Father God, we give this to you. We just give you all the glory and the praise and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. We talked about last week who we worship. And guys, bottom line, you're either going to worship God or you're going to worship Satan. That's it. God or Satan. It's black or white. Here we are. So you have to choose who you're going to worship. And basically, you do that every day, whether you know it or not. In Joshua chapter 24, verse 15, it says, But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your forefathers serve beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that's what I say, and that's what my household says, and it will to the day we die. We will serve the Lord God. All right, here's some of the questions that you all submitted that will be answered tonight, okay? One person just put a statement, I need to know more about worship. You're going to learn more about worship tonight. What order did they worship in the Bible? We're going to talk a little bit about that. What are some different ways of worship? How many different ways of worship are there? Do you have to worship out loud? I'm saved. Do I have to be baptized? When I sin, I feel God is mad at me. Should this affect my worship? How can you keep distractions out of your time that you worship? Do you have to come to church to worship? How do you worship at home? And one person put, I like God. I like God too but I also am madly in love with him. And I pray that whoever wrote that, that you all fall madly in love with God. How can I know if God is talking to me or if it is my imagination? And I'm going to tell you, this, 
I have had a I have had a student texting me almost all day today with that very question. He has burnt my phone up with so many questions. And we're going to answer that tonight, okay? All right, so what you saw when we very first started the uh, worship service, you saw a band up here singing praises, right? Okay, you all were dancing, doing the moves, right? And then you saw a dance team come out, did some movements to a song, okay? All of that is worship if, if their focus was on Him. Now, they can get up here and dance and do it for their glory, and that's not worship for God. That's worship for themselves. But if they're up here and their heart is, Lord, you're holy, whatever they do, okay? Lord, you're holy, and their heart is crying out in the midst of all of that, then that is worship. That's what God wants. Um, John chapter 4, verses 23 and 24, this is such... This is, a, this is a key verse right here for worship, guys, okay? It says, Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers... Who wants to be a true worshiper? I want to be a true worshiper. When the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and His worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. Well, forever, I'm not going to lie, forever in my life, I did not understand spirit and truth. Now, you're going to th some of you all may be going, well, that's just so easy. Well, for me, it wasn't. I didn't understand it. Nobody had ever taught me what that means. But what it means is to worship God in spirit and in truth. In spirit means, first of all, you have to know Him as your Savior. And I'm going to ask you to be so bold tonight that of those that know Jesus as their Savior, I'm going to ask you to stand up and not, and not be, not, not be uh, ashamed of Him. Okay, you can sit down. Okay, so you very first have to worship Him in spirit. So if you've asked Jesus to come into your heart and He is your Savior, when you worship God, when you're giving all of your worship to Him, however many different ways that we're going to talk about some different ways, that is worshiping in spirit. Does that make sense? God is a spirit, okay? Everybody good with that? Okay, to worship Him in truth. Okay, well, okay, what does that mean? Worship Him in truth. Well, I thought, okay, well maybe, yeah, reading the Bible, yeah, that's worship. That's a form of worship. That's truth. Jesus is truth. God is truth. He cannot lie. God cannot tell a lie. He cannot. That is not Him. He cannot do that. So I'm thinking, how do you... What's that mean? I don't, I, I don't understand. And literally, not until, this is the truth, Greg Ford had written, he's, he's working on a book, it's called What is Worship? And he had put in there, to worship in truth is with sincerity. So, when the, when the dance team is up here, and they're up here for themselves, they're not, I'm not saying they are, I'm just using it as an example. Or the praise team, or me. Whoever, if we're up here to exalt ourselves, that's not, that's not in truth. That's not in sincerity. Does that make sense? Sincerity is when my heart longs and yearns to be poured out for Jehovah God and to worship Him and lift Him up. And with everything that I am, everything that I am, and guys, I'm going to tell you something. If I have sin in my life, if I know that I'm doing something that God does not want me to do, my worship is going to stink. It's not going to be there. I'll just tell you flat out. Because the sin, sin cannot be in the presence of God. And if you're really worshiping, I guarantee you what will happen. He will reveal your sin and you'll have to hit this altar. Because you won't be able to stand there and hold on to it. And truly worship Him. So, spirit and truth. We have to worship in spirit. God is spirit, so when we get saved, we worship in spirit. He's inside of us. The Holy Spirit comes inside of us. I thought about that. This Y'all going to laugh, okay? And you can just laugh because I'm just old. But literally, God, God showed me all of this Saturday morning at 1 o'clock in the morning. I got up. He showed me. He showed me one little piece of thing. And I went up and I, I got up and I went in there and wrote it down. And 
I come back to the bed, and Scott said, are you okay? I said, yeah, I'm fine. I just I had to write something down. Well, I laid back down, and, and I couldn't. I had to get back up again, and I was up for an hour. God just throwing, I mean, just throwing stuff out. I've never had that to happen in my life, ever, okay? Well, one of the things that God showed me, and y'all can laugh at this, but when I was your age, Mario Brothers was like the game, okay? I don't know what it is now because I don't play them. But I remember we played hours of Mario Brothers, okay? I love little Luigi, and I don't, whatever his name is. I don't even know what his name is. But anyway, huh? Did I? Praise the Lord. Okay. Anyway, we played that game and played that game. But do you remember how little he was? Do y'all know that game? Oh, well, hallelujah. See, God knew y'all knew that game. Okay, you know how little he starts out to be? That's right. Then you eat the mushroom, and then he grows big. What happens when he grows big after he eats the mushroom? He can smash things. He has more power. He can jump higher, right? Okay, literally, God woke me up and had me to write that down. That, that is what's, that's what happens to us when the Holy Spirit comes inside of us, okay? We're going to pretend the Holy Spirit was that. When we ask God, we're going to pretend he was the mushroom, okay? But anyway, when we, when we are infiltrated with the Holy Spirit... Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, y'all have experienced him on chrysalis and different places. When we're in filter with the Holy Spirit, when God comes into us and fills us up, we have a power that little man didn't have before. Okay? So that, that's what I'm trying to get you to understand. When you receive him into your life, you are worshiping in spirit. You have received the Holy Spirit into your body, into your, into your heart and soul. Okay? Anyway. Whatever that was worth, maybe somebody can connect with that. Yeah. Does he really? I never got to that stage. <laughs> I never made it to that level. <laughs> Luigi did? Luigi could? Amen. That's right. Right. She's saying the more she grows in the Lord, the more wisdom and knowledge and power she receives. And guys, I'm going to tell you, you cannot do that without getting in the Word of God and praying daily and seeking His face. Okay, we saw singing, we saw dancing, we've prayed. Um, we're going to talk, the different ty- some different types of worship is ob- obeying His voice. Number one. In 1 Samuel, it says, in 1 Samuel 15, 22, if those are taking notes, it says, Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much, in, as much as in obeying the voice of the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of the rams. Okay, we got a lot of movement going on and a lot of talking. We need to be still. Okay, it's like what I said last week. If you call somebody... To not hear the word of God. If you're a distraction, you will, be re- you will be held accountable for that. So you need to be still. It's only for a little bit of time. That's it, okay? But what God is saying there is, you know what? This praise team can get up here and just do, you know, throw their sacrifices of praise up in the air. And, and we can do this and do this and worship in the Lord. But if our heart isn't right and we're not obeying the voice of God, and he's told us to do something, God said, I would rather you obey me than to do that. But this is what happens, guys. When we obey, we do that. We worship. It's a a connection. If you are walking with the Lord and obeying God, an automatic response is going to be worship. You can't help yourself. You cannot help yourself but to worship him. Okay. Um... I sent um, Aaron a picture, but did you get it? Praise Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Early worship, and and I know some of you all remember this, but when God created Adam and Eve, do you know how they worshipped God? Before that. He said they walked with him. They walked with him in the garden. Now, can you imagine, this was before sin, okay? This was before they were tempted and they gave in to sin. They walked with the Lord in the garden. 
Now, I don't know, some of you all probably can't imagine that, and I can't really imagine that, but I mean, how wonderful would that be? How wonderful would that be? The garden was paradise. Nothing bad, nothing bad. If they had, but Satan stuck his little head in there. And I call him a little peon because that's what he is. But you know what? He made the fruit look enticing and Eve ate of it. And then she gave it to her husband. And then sin entered the world. Now, after sin entered the world, a sacrifice had to be made. Okay, it wasn't God walking in the garden with them anymore. Actually, when he called for them, they hid. And what do we do when we do something wrong? What do we try to do? We try to hide it. You know, you went out Friday night with your girlfriend. Even though you said you're not going to have premarital sex, you ended up uh, doing some things you shouldn't have done. Come to church on Sunday morning, what do you try to do? You hide it. You, you say, well, if I don't tell nobody, nobody's going to know. Or I pop this pill, I'm addicted to prescription drugs. Nobody will know. If I don't tell nobody, nobody will know. We hide our sin. But I'm here to tell you guys and girls, God sees it all. He knows it all. So you're not hiding it from him. But that's what we try to do is hide it. Okay, the first sacrifice that was made, and I don't know if y'all know this or not, and I'm going to try to go pretty fast. They had to have clothes to be put on their body. Because they were naked in the garden. But before they sinned, they didn't even know they were naked. Because that's how God wanted it to be. But once they sinned, their eyes were open and they saw their nakedness. And then when God called them, they went and hid. Okay, well, the fellowship was broken. Okay, by sin. So what had to be, happen was blood had to be shed. And there was, a, there was a, an animal of some kind that God took and made clothes for Adam and Eve. That was the first shed blood. So that was the first sacrifice. Another, uh, another form of uh, worship in the Old Testament, they used to build altars of stone, okay? Moses did, Noah did, several, several different people. Author Abraham. And they would offer a sacrifice. They would have to offer an animal uh, for sacrifice for their sin, Okay? Now, we're going to touch on the tabernacle. Can you? Yeah. Okay. Now, I want you all to really focus. We're going to just touch this, okay? Because we could go like weeks on this, okay? Because it's very deep. But this is a traveling tent, okay? This is what in the Old Testament, like we come to the whack, they went to the tabernacle. They went to the tent. And everywhere they moved, they took this tent down and they carried it with them. And then they set it up again. Same exact way. When they'd move, they'd tear it down, move, set it up again. Okay, the entrance, do you see the entrance right here on the right side? Okay, that is the only way in the tabernacle, the only way. You cannot go, you cannot, <laughs> you cannot go um, through the sides, you cannot go underneath the curtains, you cannot. That's the entrance right there, okay? You see the fire? Okay, that's called the bronze altar. Now what happens is this. Okay, the sacrifice, the animal, they would have to bring an animal to be sacrificed for their sins. They would have to sacrifice that animal at the entrance because sin could not enter into the presence of God. So they would sacrifice an animal. The animal would so-called take their sin, okay? It was symbolic, okay? Then the priests, which were appointed by God, would take that sacrifice, put it on that altar where the, um, the fire is, and would burn it up. Now, that goes back to that verse we said in 1 Samuel. Would God rather have burnt offerings than your obedience? That's what he's talking about, burnt offerings. That's, that's it, okay? That's, that's how they did that. The little bronze levier right there, that was a wash basin that the priest washed their hands in. But I want you all to look at that little tent in the middle of the big long tent. Do you see where it says the veil? Okay, that is the curtain that separated the holy place that's right in front of there. There's all kinds of, there's different types of furniture in there, but I'm not going to go over that because we don't have time. But each thing points to Jesus Christ. Back in the Old Testament, even even before they even knew Jesus, okay? All of this points to Jesus. 
But in behind that veil is what we call the Ark of the Covenant, and it still exists today. It is somewhere. That piece of furniture is somewhere in this world. And on that Ark of the Covenant, and I wish I'd sent him a picture of this, but anyway, it's a box. God told them to make this. And on that is two cherubim that face each other. And God, literally, they didn't see him with their eyes, but literally God's presence set between those two cherubim. Okay? It's called the mercy seat, the Ark of the Covenant. Okay? Now, I'm getting somewhere with this, so y'all need to hold on, okay? Now, in that, oh, put, yeah. Okay, you see the veil? Only the priest could go in there. That was such a holy place of where God's presence was that they tied, they put bells on the bottom of his robe and tied a rope around his leg. When he went in there one time a year, if the bell stopped ringing, they pulled him out because he was dead. That's the presence of a holy God. God's presence sitting on that mercy seat. When the priest would go in to offer the sacrifice, to offer the burnt offerings up, when he would go in behind that veil, only one priest could do that one time a year. I mean, we're talking about a holy God. He, he, don't, take, he don't take nothing lightly, okay? When they would go in there, if the bell stopped ringing, they would just take the rope and pull him out because he was dead. In the Old Testament, in the Ark of the Covenant, when, when the ark was captured by people that it wasn't supposed to be captured by, if they touched that covenant, if they touched the ark or even looked in it, dead. Now we're talking about a gold box like, with the presence of God in the middle. Okay. Now somebody that didn't know God, never heard of it, they just think, well, that's a box. I'm just going to go look at, lift the lid. Dead. Because he's a holy God. Okay. Is that making sense? That's the early form of worship. That's what they had to do. Now, the thing about the lamb at the entrance of the gate, he had to be unblemished. Unblemished means, girls, y'all need to turn around and stop talking. Unblemished means from the inside out. When they, when they started sacrificing the lamb, when they cut his throat and started cut, cutting it out, if there was a blemish in him, they could not use that lamb. Throw it to the side. It had to be a perfect lamb which represented Jesus Christ because he was the perfect lamb. Okay, it went from the tent to a building tabernacle, okay, temple. All right, that's where we went from. And I don't, how, how many of you all know that when Jesus was crucified that there was an earthquake, that it got dark, and what was torn? Do y'all do remember that? What was torn? The veil. Where, where was the veil? In front of the Ark of the Covenant, which, which separated the other tent from the Holy of Holies. The Holy of Holies was such a holy place that only the priest could go in there one time a year. So when Jesus Christ was crucified, the veil tore from the top to the bottom. Now, I'm not talking about a veil in that little bitty tent. I'm talking about a veil in a temple. We're talking about really, really, really high, this high, okay? And it tore from the top to the bottom. Why do you think it tore from the top to the bottom? What? Say, I, was, I couldn't hear what you said. Okay, before Jesus Christ came and died on the cross for all of us, a priest had to go into the Holy of Holies for us. But once Jesus Christ, the perfect unblemished lamb, came and the veil was tore, we had, we had free access into the Holy of Holies. Does that make sense? So that's why that now, when you get ready to pray, Father God, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for who you are. I praise you, God, for who you are. And we exalt your holy name. I literally can enter right into the Holy of Holies. And I don't have to have a priest do that for me. Does that make sense? That's why it's so important. When God's Word said that the veil was tore, it was tore. And we got free access. Hallelujah. And God's Word says, come with confidence into the Holy of Holies, into my presence. And that's only through the blood of Jesus Christ. That's why we worship. That's the God I want you to get excited about. He did that for you. 
He was the unblemished lamb. He was the one that gave us access into the Holy of Holies. Does that make sense? Y'all understanding that? Okay. All right. We're fixing to watch something. And I want y'all to be very quiet. Just really watch this. Silence ruled the outer space. Ominously towering, it stood. The symbol of a spirit war between the one named Lucifer and the Morning Star, the ultimate of good. Enveloped by a trillion planets, clean. Got the fire will oversee. 
said, you shut your face, I wrote the book. Then the father looked at his only son and said, you know the rules. Your blood will cleanse their sin and calm their fears. Then he pointed his finger at Satan and said, and I know you know the rules. You've been twisting Then Satan kicked him in his side, and blood and water flowed. And they waited for the ten count of defeat. God the Father turned his head. His tears announcing Christ was dead. The ten count would proclaim the battle's end. Then Satan trembled through his sweat. In unexpected horror, yet as God started to count by saying, Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Thank you, Lord. Does that, do y'all get that? Do y'all get that? That's why we worship. That's why we're here. Because of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Because of what he did for you. And even if you were the only person, Brandon, that God said, I think I'll make Brandon. Brandon. And put him here on this earth. Even if you were the only person, he would still done that. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Father God, we worship you tonight. Lord God, I give you all the praise. God, I thank you that no matter what we're dealing with tonight, because God, every one of those demons represented either prescription drugs, sex, alcohol, pornography, 
homosexuality, whatever it is, God, that's not of you. That's what those demons represented tonight. But Father God, I praise you that at your feet they have to bow. And God, that you overcome all things. So Father, right now I just feel like I need to just close this out and I'm going to ask Daniel to come. Lord Jesus, I just ask that you have your way in this place. That God, if there's somebody here that doesn't know you, Lord, that they would run to you right now. That they would run to you, God. And ask you to come into their lives. And Lord, not only would they run to you, but Lord, they wouldn't be afraid to confess you as Lord in front of all their peers and their family and everybody. Because, he, because your word says that if you're ashamed, if we're ashamed of you before men, that you'll be ashamed of us before your Father. And God, I'm not ashamed. I'm so not ashamed of you. I love you more today than I've ever loved you in my life. So God, my prayer is for these kids to experience you, Lord. God, make yourself real to them. That worship would just explode from them. God, I give you all the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name. Thank you. You know, I, I really don't know what else could be said and what else could be shown. I always like the ending of that when when Jesus raises up and He raises His hands because Satan's been defeated. Because that's how it truly is. But for so many people in America today and in the world today, you, you are right the opposite. You are the one and you feel like, young lady and young man, you are the one being drilled by Satan. Like he has a personal attack out on you, Gary. Like he has a, a personal attack out on you, Dalton. You see, the thing is, is we allow hell to rise up against us, but can I tell you something? Becoming a Christian doesn't mean life gets easier. Becoming a Christian doesn't mean everything's okay. But becoming a Christian means you ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart, and once Jesus is in here, Jesus can stand up for you when Satan approaches. And so no matter what hell may come against you, when you rise up and Jesus rises up inside of you and you say, you know what? I've got more Jesus in me than there is any kind of hatred in this world. Jesus will fight the fight for you. And can I tell you something, young people? Some of you all need to quit fighting the fight that you're in. Some of you all are in such a battle. We, we constantly are in a war, in a battle zone to where Satan in this world is trying to take our minds and they're trying to twist our thoughts and it's constantly trying to win us over, even by the music we listen to. You see, I, earlier we were in the loft this evening and as we were talking, we were just talking about different kinds of music and everything and there wasn't really an argument or a discussion, but as we were talking, somebody brought up about listening to to some kind of music and I just made a reference and I wasn't accusing them, I wasn't saying anything about them, but what I am saying is to anybody who's listening, can I tell you something? The eyes and the ear and the mouth is an outlet to the heart and it pours right back out. You see, what you see and what you watch on TV when nobody else is watching and what you're looking at on the computers, not only is it going in, but it's coming right back out because you begin to look at young ladies and young men that exact same way. And the things that you hear in music comes into the heart and then you begin to hear everybody around you speaking hatefulness and, and, and all this filth because you put yourself in situations and around people that listen to it. You see, there's people, I, I like it sometimes when people get in my car and, and, and maybe I have... Um, and, and this is a rare occasion because it's very rare for somebody who's uh, to get in my car who doesn't mind what I'm listening to. But when I can turn my music on and it's on Caleb or something Christian, and just the look, they're like, really? You know, why are you listening to this? What, what's the deal with this? And the thing is, guys, is what we surround ourselves by is what will make us. And see, you all have this attitude. This whole generation has this attitude of, I'll just do whatever I want to do. If I want to live like hell, I'll live like hell, and I'll just pay the consequences later. And you see, can I tell you something? 
I told this to um, the kids the other night. I said, listen, I said, me and, me and Brent Lyle were talking. And, and a young lady asked, said, what did you all do in high school? How, how did you stay so strong? And the thing is, me and Brent was talking, we weren't strong. We weren't strong then. Our lives did have a lot of rebellion in it. We did live in a lot of filth. And the thing is, is the reason I'm up here tonight and the reason I care so much, and that's why I'm telling you, and the reason all these adults are surrounding you in this room and praying for you right now is because, guys, we don't want you to go through the same mess we went through. Hallelujah. There's a better way. There's a better way. You wonder why your life's a living hell, but yet you won't give Jesus the time of day. Can I tell you something? Jesus is for you, not against you. All hell may rise up. Let it rise up. Listen, I'm a pastor. I'm a pastor for you guys. I am your personal pastor. I am here to be called upon by you at any time for any reason. And the thing is, is this. Hell still rises in my life and I have to fight it off. Being a pastor, being a Christian doesn't mean no hell will rise. But it means when it comes, you'll be ready. And so guys, you've got to be ready. As we continue to go in this worship, what I want you to do right now is I just want you to close your eyes and bow your head. And I know this seems like something that we do in repetitiveness, but the reason we do this is not because we're trying to hide anything. It's not that there's some magician getting ready to pop out and do something. It's the fact that I'm asking you to become reverent before God right now. I want you to stop. If Jesus Christ was standing exactly where I'm standing and He looked at you, would you be reverent unto Him or would you directly disobey Him? Unfortunately, some of you in here would disobey Him. And that's sad. But can I tell you, He's not mad at you. He still loves you. And He's got a purpose for you. But guys, as you have your heads bowed and your eyes closed, and as you let God love on you, I want you to think about this. Beth shared with you tonight that, that back in the Old Testament, they had what was called the Ark of the Covenant. And it was protected. It was in a place, the Holy of Holies. And you could not enter in there if you had any kind of filth in your life whatsoever. Now tonight, this altar is the Holy of Holies. And I'm going to ask you, if I was to ask everybody in this room to get up and come forward, and it's the Holy of Holies, but whoever steps past this line right here, if your life is not right with Jesus Christ, you will drop dead. How many of you all are fearful because you know there's stuff in your life you need to lay down? You see, if you feel that right now, then you need to lay it down. Guys, don't pack it anymore. Why in the world would you? I, I can't stand people coming in and saying they got a little bit of Jesus and then going out and living like hell. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 that we cannot drink of the same cup of Satan and of Jesus. It's either all Jesus or it's all Satan. It also tells us in His Word that salt water doesn't come out of the same spring as fresh water. And so the thing is, guys, if your life reflects Jesus, then Jesus is there. If your life reflects hell, hell is there. But there's an option and there's an answer and it is Jesus Christ. So this altar is open to anyone who wants to seek out the face of Jesus Christ tonight. Don't you dare hold on. Don't you worry about anybody else. Don't you, don't you be worried about going back home to something. You let go, let God, and run to Him tonight. This altar is open. And I pray that you find yourself in meditation. If you're not down here praying, pray where you are. Pray for the person sitting next to you. Maybe they don't know Jesus. Wouldn't that be something? I want you to think right now about the person sitting next to you. You had the opportunity tonight to pray for them and to ask them if they know Jesus. They may die tonight in their sleep and you'll never see them again and you never took time to ask them. Get it right. Don't hold on to it.